Um, I actually don't have an assumption about you because I know everything about you. Mm. Right, next question. That the assumption is that you are really organised and everything goes to plan. Right, well, I would say I am very organised, but honestly, everything doesn't always go to plan and I would be shocked if that anyone does, really. Mm. Like, I try my hardest to think of every possible scenario. Let's say if we were going out for the day, I would take, a, take with us everything that I'd think would possibly happen just in case. Yeah, that's organised, but not everything ever goes to plan and there are times where we've gone out and literally forgotten to take something or something's happened and you hadn't mm. thought about it or something's happened you had never even dreamed of happening, wouldn't it? Like, just... I'm the opposite. We are organised. I am organised. I'm the opposite. Yeah, you are. I'll take nothing out and <laughs> just deal with it. Um, been caught out a few times, but then equally, Charlotte's probably dragged around the bag of God knows what. <laughs> For the last seven years and never used it so i ha i am one of them uh, changing yeah, bags she's funny like i have she got her everything. hair done today and last night she actually put her teacup <laughs> on the side with a tea bag in it to make a tea to take to the hairdressers to save herself that <laughs> like she's obsessed with tea seconds. so she'd never forgotten but it's like yeah i'll do that and then i'm gonna do that in the morning and that's Charlotte, so... Yeah, but I, I just think, I think if you plan in advance, then that way, I all normally... them little tiny jobs that you prepare for mm. will never make you late. And the only reason I was five minutes late today was because Alex made me late. I True? came back late from the True gym, True story. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. yeah, I think um, I sort of... I plan where we're going to go, and I get us there, and I kind of make us have a good time not you organize not literally the, like i kind of arrange it and i i keep it going and charlotte thinks of all the, the little details the and then i guess stuff. we kind of it kind of works but things massively don't go to plan like i remember um we went for a walk once and we took like this, this little train that we have the triplets in we don't really use it anymore because it's um they're a bit big they're for a bit it big, yeah um and i had this stupid idea to go walking around the river Cut a long story short, oh, yeah. it got dark really quickly. It had been pouring down with rain, so we got caught basically in this mudslide, not not like a bad one, we We got caught in behind, yeah, but mud, you couldn't like, pull it along. It started getting dark, they all started crying. I was using my torch phone. Using her to phone find on our where we were going. And we were in the middle of nowhere. You know, that them sort of things happen all the time, but that's part of the fun, I guess. That's what you do. I guess, yeah. Right, okay. Another one. What should we do? Um, do either of you have a job outside of social media? Um, that's a good one. So, well, you start. So, I did before I had the girls. So, after the girls, it was just... I was never going to be able to go back to work. So I used to work as a secretary from the age of 18 in a law firm in London, City of London, and I loved it. And I then got promoted to a PA, a personal assistant, as time went on. I then went off to have Henry in 2013, and I came back fighting because I thought I came back full time and I was adamant that I wanted to be an EA, which is an executive assistant, because it was basically my dream job. So that's exactly what I did. I worked from 2014 onwards, I worked hard, 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 as hard as I possibly could to make sure I would get that job. Um, and yeah, went through very, very hard tests and exams, etc., to pass and eventually be given a job as an EA, which is an executive, executive assistant to a global head. And I loved it. And then within a year, I fell pregnant via IVF with the girls and unfortunately I wanted to go back afterwards but it just never happened um so yeah so basically I then become a full-time mum at home and then obviously went on to have Jimmy and now I am just a mummy not just a mummy but now I am a mummy at home to five children a yummy mummy oh well, thank you very much but yeah so now I am at home so I don't actually work as an actual job um as in like in a firm or something yeah no i am just at home luckily for me you over to you um yep yeah, i still work um i work for a law firm in finance and i've been there about 12 years um 
and yeah, I love it. It's very good. That's it. That's it. Works hard. How did you come up with the girls' beautiful names? Um, when we found out we're having three girls, obviously we were over the moon. Um, Can't believe our luck. We didn't talk too much about names early on because we didn't want to associate one of the unborn babies with a name. There was a lot that could happen or go wrong and we kind of was quite conscious of that. So mm. um, we were going to choose one each and then kind of have a, a, a conversation about the third one. Um, yeah, it's I mutually agree. Yeah, I liked Maisie and you always liked Lottie because that was your nan's name. So that was like a stone wall name from day one, Lottie. Yeah, as if we ever had a girl, I had to have Lottie. Yeah, but if we'd had one girl... Yeah, but I think if we had one girl, Lottie would have been a middle name. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe, maybe it would have been the name. It's a beautiful name, but yeah. we it might not so have been like choices, 100%. But yeah. then we basically wrote about 20 names in a um, on a bit of paper, 10 each, put them in an envelope, shook them around, got them out and... Chose 10. Cho narrowed that down to about 10. Some of them we were like, what were we thinking? Um, we've still got them pieces of paper. We've still got them bits of paper, actually. Um, then... Henry loved the name Bella. He used to go on and on and on yeah, about it. Yeah, I don't it. even know where he got it from. He didn't even have a friend called Bella or anything. He just he must and have we liked the name Bella, but we knew a few. Yeah, and so we had a friend that had a Bella, and so we kind of adapted it to Annabella because we also knew a lot of people with an Isabella, which I do like that name, but we wanted to be a little to be bit different, different, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and then. So I'd we had never Lottie. even heard of Annabella, you found that name. Yeah. I'd never even heard of that. And I actually said to him, have you just made that name up? And he was like, no. Well, our brother-in-law brother, our, yeah. our brother actually messaged when we named him and was like, That's just, you've made that name up. <laughs> um, and then we had to Google it and we so found it was Essentially, name. Lottie was Charlotte's choice. I and chose Florence because I thought it was a beautiful name, always have. Yeah. Um, and then Annabella, we kind of... No, between... Annabella you chose. And Florence, we both liked when I was pregnant with Henry. That was one of our girl choices. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, anyway. I can't remember now. Um, anyway, the flowers, <laughs> we, we wanted to link the girls um, somehow. And we didn't really know how to do it. And Rose, Annabella Rose, was a really kind of obvious... Yeah, it flowed well, didn't flow. it? ...flow. Then we came up with Violet, because Violet was my nan's sister. And that's just a really lovely name. Mm. And I didn't even know her, but we just like That's kind of where it came from um, and we just thought it was a beautiful name and then when we had the two it was really weird wasn't it I went outside our old house and there was these like blue flowers growing which Literally we found out weren't bluebells no we thought they were bluebells but we thought they were bluebells and then I said to Charlotte what about Lottie Bluebell and I thought she'd be like that's really awful <laughs> um, and she was like oh my god I love it so Originally we had, because we, we'd had Poppy, Poppy do you remember? Yeah. Because I am a huge flower lover. I'm actually a florist as well. Uh, me and my mum and sister did years ago as a course. And I'm absolutely obsessed with flowers. So like Alex said, we wanted to link the girls but not have like the same initials because a lot of people do that have the same first letter as a name. And I just found on the best of times trying to get their names out i didn't mm. want them to feel i wanted them to be different but like you said have the same link so flowers were just an obvious choice for us and we liked poppy and florence was our names for girls choices first time round. um so yeah we had lottie poppy which obviously never worked mm. so then we were like oh should it be florence poppy and we were really trying hard to fit poppy in and then like alex said he just saw this little flower and he come in and said i've got it and he said i said what and he said and I remember you saying to me, please just think about it before you say no, because I'm quite one of the people that instantly just say no. He's like, just think about it. And he said, there's a flower outside and it just, it's meant to be Lottie Bluebell. And I was just like, I love it. It just seemed I've got, to just... I've got a lot of bit emotional. <laughs> it just seemed to work, like, instantly. Oh. <laughs> oh. It just... Um... It just it's it slotted together and it just was a, it just I just remember it so perfectly. clearly. It just and we like, and when you I said yeah, you were like really? Yeah, I was but shocked. It's because it was a little bit different. Like we I didn't really know anyone called Bluebell and no. it's quite a I don't know, just never really heard of anyone. Anyway, next before. question. So yeah, so oh, my or phone's next gone assumption. out. Right, so next assumption. So yeah, so that's how we got their names together. What else should we do? That you the assumption is that you are all constantly happy and the children are well mannered. I would say we are definitely not 
constantly happy. We try our best to be happy, but I can be really moody sometimes. <laughs> when you're tired, you're mo I'm just really moody. Like, and I've realised that a cup of tea first thing in the morning <laughs> lifts my Before spirit. Before my exercise. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say that we are probably 80%, would you say, happy? Happy most of the time? Yeah. Maybe more? Like, I don't we, know. I think got... we're quite positive, happy people. I think we we try our hardest to have fun with the kids, give them our time. And I always think, people always say to me, people don't want, actually, put it this way, once someone said to me, and it really stuck to, in my heart, in my head um, and my heart, um, they said, oh gosh, your children are constantly smiling. They are so happy. And I was like, oh, thank you. It's really kind. They said, it's because you constantly smile, Charlotte, and you're constantly happy. So when they look at you, that's what they see. So that's what they want to do. And I thought, it's so true. If you're just constantly, you know, moody and having a go at them and angry, then that's how they're going to reflect, that, that you're reflecting mm. that onto them, aren't you? So for us, we try our hardest when we're with them to give them our time, to try and be fun, to try and be happy and try and create that family vibe yeah. I guess I suppose but we, we want we want them to be happy like you know we've got many reasons to be happy we're very yeah, fortunate we're very people and um, we've got beautiful family you know we've got pretty much everything we need um, like we're, we're massively grateful for it um, and I think the least we can be is happy yeah um, I've obviously got my struggles that I've talked about before um, maybe I'll talk about on a separate YouTube video, um, but that doesn't coincide with my relationship with my family. That's something no. separately that I'm dealing with. But um, and you're doing it, it very well. Yeah, thank you. And in terms of the kids' manners, you know, we're massive advocates of mm. um, the children being polite, the children sitting at the table. We don't have screens at the table. I'm not judging people that do because that's fine. Yeah, everyone has to do what works. We have had screens at the table, probably. And you know, if we were out in a restaurant and they were going mad, then we'd probably get a screen out. But yeah. generally, we don't. You know, we don't put up with them not eating their dinner. We don't put up with them arguing. You know, we are strict. And manners, and manners cost nothing. Yeah, and it's just like, not acceptable no. to me as a dad that my children would not be polite. Um, I think and, we'd be embarrassed if we went yeah. out and they went, "Can I, you know, give me a water or something?" Or, give me that yeah. like I'm Not constantly it. saying what do you say say please say thank you and it's got to a point now where we don't have to even say that sometimes we remind them but most of the time mm -hmm. you say to them what do you say and they go oh thank you or please may I have and I think to myself it makes us super proud when they do things like yeah. that because I think it does show that it works and like I said manners cost nothing and we get so... people coming up to us in restaurants and stuff and sort of saying oh my god you know your children are so well behaved and I think we take it for granted a bit because we don't see it perhaps but no. that, that's come We're from sick. us working yeah you know us we created that um scenario it's hard. and it's hard and sometimes you know we don't get everything right you know we get hammered for what we feed them we don't feed them the right stuff we get hammered for um you know favoritism the dog's a bit fat we get hammered for loads of stuff right but the but with a lot of it, we go, yeah, whatever. But um, with the manners and that, we've got that, yeah, <laughs> we've got that bang on. You know, we try and bring our kids up right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we Definitely. don't always get it right. But um, we try. But we try. Definitely. Um, that you have a big support network around you, family, etc. I'd say we do and we don't. I think we have a big family. And we're very lucky to have brothers and sisters and stuff. But And they do come and visit and they do help out hugely when they're here. Um, but we don't have someone with us every single day. I would say five out of seven days we're on our own. One day a week your dad visits for a couple of hours and spends some nice time with us and the kids. And on uh, another day my parents will come and visit. Um, that's a weekly occurrence. And then here and there my sisters will mm. visit or we'll visit brothers and sisters and that's kind of how it works but we don't have a consistent help if you know what i mean yeah. if you and, agree and, yeah and like again rightly or wrongly and this is our, my opinion and probably charlotte's as well i'm, I'm having her opinion now <laughs> um they're our kids so they're our responsibility yeah you know even when charlotte's parents do come around we don't 
sit on the sofa and go over to you. Yeah, we don't expect them to do anything. It's not down to them. They're our children. And, you know, if people want to give us a night off and babysit while we can go and have a drink, then great. Um, but, or even just help. Like, often, yeah. like, my sister-in-law the other day, she was like, oh, or the other weeks before lockdown, she said, oh, do you want me to go and bath the kids while you're sorting... Yeah. Like it was Jimmy or like you know could you want me yeah. to do these three Why you're sorting Jimmy and I was like oh god that's a really good help thank you like then while she was doing them she dried them all while I got Jimmy and Henry done like yeah, little things like that make a massive it. difference um, it is a big help but and like people you know it, when people come around the fact that they're there and they're entertaining the children a bit and they're not clinging on to us yeah, helps that's help. in itself so um we are both massively supported we could have someone around here in 30 seconds if we rung them up any 24 hours a day yeah and we know that and equally we could have people around here every day of the week because we our family are always desperate to see us and spend time with us but we also like our own space and time and creating our own memories and we've got i think we've got a good little balance of it really yeah um, so guys you may have noticed the light has changed a bit it suddenly got really dark and we've had to put the light on um so i've just got a few small ones so i reckon we should just do really quick answers and then wrap this up because you guys have probably listened to us talking more than enough. So you must be knackered. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the yeah. best way to answer that one. Yeah, we're pretty much knackered every single night. Well, we almost um, kind of run on... Um, I think we almost operate on that whole... And that sounds difficult, but any parents will probably get it to a certain degree. Or people perhaps that have their jobs that you know there's people at my place that work till four or five in the morning solidly for a month i think once you get into that mentality it, of we? like being on the go and like 100 mile an hour you almost thrive on that environment and as much as like when we first open our eyes i feel like you know someone's thrown chlorine in them <laughs> um we we're up we're out the kids we just breakfast, crack on. we crack on and then at night we should go to bed now. It's nine o'clock. We should go to bed, but we won't. We'll sit here till midnight watching TV because Netflix. Yeah, I think we don't know any different. You no. know, we went from having one child to four children in overnight, basically, and knackered doesn't even come close to the night's feeds with the girls. The first four mm. months were Brutal. exhausting, um, but I would pretty much say, yeah, we are knackered, but we have accepted that we are probably going to be knackered for the next. 20 years so yeah. we've just accepted it basically yeah and we're not you know i'm sure there's as i always say i'm sure there's people working a lot harder than us we're not yeah we are knackered we are knackered we but do we're, go through it's stages. a good knackered do you remember when i like oh, it's a good knackered I, I went through this stage about i don't know a couple of months ago of just like disappearing upstairs and laying yeah, on the bed didn't I? Sleep. and like, having a little sleep because i was, was just we feeling got, it how long was that at the start of lockdown Maybe. I don't know, literally, he'd be like, oh, I'm just going to pop up and put something away. And I'd sort of turn around and think, where is he? Like, it's been like 45 minutes. I'd go on the hunt for him, go upstairs, and he'd have lay down in the bed. Mm. Anyway, right, next assumption. Um, oh, no assumption, but please cut your beard and your hair. Well, you've had your hair done today, and your moustache <laughs> will go eventually. Yeah. When you okay, sorry, it. I'll do that <laughs> um, right away. There's another one here, which I think is a good one. The girls play so much that they don't have time for screen time. I wish they'd bleed and wood. We bought them all, um, what they call Kindles. Kindle fires. For Christmas. They rarely play them. And they can't. They're just not interested. And but that's trust why me, they play so yeah, much. Yeah, they do. But They're very outdoor girls, you know, that we, whole family are. Yeah, I think we've created that. Yeah. Um, but we do, we try and settle them down. Then we put a Disney movie on or we put. Um, we give them all the screens. And they're about, they're about I think it's five hit five minutes, this, isn't it? I reckon they will. I mean. I think I think majority of time you're right. They the, the girls, they play so much they don't have screen time. I think you're probably spot on. Most of the time. They want to go off and play in the garden, they play in the playroom, they play with their babies, they follow us around, they follow me around everywhere. If I'm going to do the washing, they'll come and help me, and it becomes a game. They don't really ever ask for the Kindle, it's very rare, they probably only ever ask for it if um, Henry's on his iPad, mm. and they see him playing a game, they're like, oh, I want to have a go, and then half the time they can't even work out. I think Henry out. was a bit like that though, he, yeah, he didn't really know... And I think that's us though, wasn't it? Yeah. We were worried about having a child that just sits solidly on an iPad or whatever and we mm. were like we don't want to create 
an iPad zombie. So we're like, right, let's make sure they do everything. And else I think they have to have a balance. I, I yeah. think, you know, in the world we live in, that they need to know how to operate an iPad. Um, yeah, because you don't want to be behind in the world. Because that's massively important. And, you know, we do everything on iPads. and But at the same time, you need to remember, you need to learn how to go crabbing and, you yeah. know, how to play bulldog in the garden, which is like where you all run. What's and the you time, have to Mr. Wolf? For anyone that don't know what bulldog is. I yeah. just think it's and important to and, have outdoor You know, go fishing yeah. and throw stones in the river. I think that's important for us. Some yeah. people... That's fine. Do whatever you want. Yeah. There's no judgment. We're no from judging us. anyone. Either if I see someone when we're out and their one year old's on a phone and a buggy, I could not care less. You do, yeah. do what you want. Well, you don't know what that person's going through. Exactly. You don't know what they've and had to deal baby with. That might be difficult. That baby and might that be a nightmare and might... only calm when they're on exactly. the train. Exactly. That person like... might have been up for a week without any sleep. So yeah. you do what you want. We do. We do that. That's yeah. cool. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just what we do. And actually, like Alex said, sometimes we're like, oh, please. Please go on the iPad. Just here's your iPads or Kindles and just sit down yeah. for half an hour and play the puzzle game or the colouring in game, please. But doesn't happen. Right, yeah. let's do one more. Okay. Very random question. Why don't the why don't the girls all have their hair partings on the same side? Very yeah, a bit strange one. All the rest we've pretty much done. Um, that's because I go with naturally how their hair parts. I'm not gonna sit and force their hair to go a particular way. Your hair always has a natural parting. Um, so yeah, so literally just found what their natural parting was and they used to just fall to the side. And then from that, it's just gone right. So it's actually Annabelle and Lottie's parting go the same way and Florence's go the other, which actually works absolute wonders with my OCD because that means that Florence is always in the middle. So hers is the one that goes the opposite. Kind of just, you know, mm. it's cute. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do one more. That? Someone said, how would you deal with the girls being bullied at school? Oh, that's a really good question. Good that's a good question. question, yeah. Um, so, firstly, I'm a school governor, so um, I've got a bit of an inside knowledge around policy regarding bullying. Mm. So I know that the school has a zero tolerance policy on bullying or discrimination, and rightly so. Um, there's a very prudent system in terms of identifying the problem and dealing with it that side obviously you know we've got three so the likeliness is that one of them would tell us if one of the others was getting mm. bullied so we're quite lucky in that respect i've never really thought about it before no it's true um, if the, the biggest fear would be that we didn't know um and how would we deal, deal with it i don't really know i think um you know, we wouldn't go effing and blinding up the school, even no. though I'm a governor, I'd get sacked. Um, I don't think that's the answer. I think, you know, as an example, a child could be bullying. You don't know what the child's going through. Um, I think we'd, we'd talk to the girls, we'd mm. make them feel that it isn't their fault. You know, the girls could be the bully, you know, and I they might not. say, they might do it because we used to make them be we're on really Instagram. Strict. Yeah, well, we yeah. were really strict. I don't know. Um, but I'd deal with it in the I same think... way, um, you know, as a family, sit down and talk about it, go up to school, deal with it, hold my hands up if it's our child. And equally, if I wouldn't judge the other parents and I, and I wouldn't, yeah, I was about to say you know. That. I think my gut feeling of how I would deal with bullying is deal with it at home, our own way. So if my child was being bullied, I would not go to the bully's parents and start rowing with them and screaming at them and shouting at them saying you're bullying my child. I would deal with the person who's being bullied and give them the attention and concentrate on them. So for me, I would do ways they can deal with it, how they can handle it, have they told the appropriate people to reassure them that it's not them, that, you know, and try and get them to think about what that person might be going through and try to be kind. And I just think it's how you deal with it, isn't it? That's how mm. I think we would deal with it. As a, as a set of parents, the bully are the bully and the bullied. It's their problem. Yeah, it's that, tough, isn't it? You, like you've got to sit down and with a school and talk about it and mm. deal with it. And and it's really difficult. You're not there to see any of it, and you no. have to just take the word off. Unfortunately, of, of the children. A lot of the children that bully have got a lot of problems at home, and it isn't that simple as you know, mum and dad sitting them down and telling them off because mum no. and dad aren't there for whatever reason. That's yeah. the problem. So, Or there's other extra problems going yeah. on. So, but anyway. Um, so 
if you're being bullied, I still think to be kill them with kindness. Be kind to that person. Be mm. nice, no matter what they're doing to you. You've told the adults and you've made them aware of it, but be kind to that person, no matter what, mm. because at the end of the day, you don't know what they're Or more importantly, it. tell your mum and dad, oh, 100%. your sister, your brother, yeah. your mate, your neighbour, the teacher, tell, I know a lot Anyone. of children watch this, tell them, I got bullied at school, I also gave out a bit of stuff at school, we call it banter, but when I look back on it, it weren't, it was, you know. Well, you're probably, yeah, a bit cruel. It was cruel, and I was, people were cruel to me, but I was cruel back, you know. One thing I had, just an example, hopefully this will be all right, but, um, when Henry was in reception, there was um, another boy who was a bit horrible to him. Um, he, for whatever reason, he, ha he did have some issues and um, he, uh, Henry would get really, really upset to a point where he was partnered up with him as a book partner and Henry would cry every single night, the night before, knowing he was going into work the, um, school the next day to be the partner with this boy. And he literally, was ref didn't want to go to school, was waking up at 3, 4 in the morning, pretending his foot was hurting, do you remember? Mm. And it was awful to see it, and it got to the root of the problem that it turned out is because this person isn't very kind to him. He'd always be horrible at him, shout at him, push him. Not every day, but just it seemed to be when they were together at this little foot corner. And um, the way I dealt with it was by telling Henry that when he walks in to school on them days, that he is Incredible Hulk. So in his mind, and how he felt, was how Incredible Hulk feels. No one else knows it, but inside you're that big, strong giant, and you're big and strong and powerful, and you don't care what anyone has to say to you, or anyone what anyone's gonna do to you, because at the end of the day, you know in your heart you're strong. So I used to say to him, so when you're sitting there and a boy's being horrible to you, just ignore him, tell the teacher, and inside be like, I'm Incredible Hulk and I'm really strong and I'm gonna not I'm gonna get through this because I'm a superhero and I don't care what anyone says to me and like literally I remember he coming out of school and he said guess what mummy he said I was I was a superhero I was Incredible Hulk today and I said oh what did you do and then suddenly I got really worried I said oh, what did you do he said I just sat there and ignored him told the teacher and then I just read my book but in my head all I kept saying to myself was you're Incredible Hulk and it just made me so emotional and then he told the teacher and then the boy got dealt with and weirdly it was never ever discussed since to a point of he just dealt with it he just I don't know what it was mm -hmm. it was like a little power inside for him and it just worked anyway it's just little things of dealing with it with your child on how you can help them deal with it I suppose is mm. probably the best I way I guess that's a don't ignore it nip it in the bud yeah which hopefully you can and that was a really great example but obviously sometimes you can't but, no of course that's um, just a simple one but i mean i'm sure there's a really terrible anyway, brilliant but so we have run out of time do you agree so that was right, we're going to wrap this up um i hope you've enjoyed the assumptions thank you to everybody who asked yeah. us a question or it's really good to made an time. assumption um and most of them were very polite and positive so yeah, thank you they as all always were. we massively appreciate it please let us know if there's anything like this you want us to do I'm going to do a talk about um, my mental health and struggles with that. Um, Charlotte's going to do some more routine stuff. We're going to do some more hauls. We're going to do some more fun with the kids. We've got days for under 20 quid in the school holidays coming up soon yes. as well, which is cool. And yeah. that is something that is really important because I know how hard it is. You sit there on Google going, where can we go today? What can we do? Yeah. Going to the zoo costs 100 quid. Especially There's some wicked families, stuff you can yeah. do um, that we've been doing and we're going to be doing next week so I've got a week off. So that's coming up soon. So stay tuned. Subscribe. Thank you for all your like, following. Comment. Likes, comment. <laughs> Ring the bell to Guys, subscribe. thank you as always for all your support yeah. and we hope you enjoyed this week's assumptions and let us know what else you want to see. Bye. It's fist bump. Oh, you right. didn't do the... Oh yeah. <laughs> right, let's have a row. Come on. Bye.